Hi, I'm Paul from Paul's Fishing Kites and I'm here tonight to give a brief introduction to flounder gigging. The most important thing to do before you go flounder sparing is to check out the area thoroughly during the daytime. Doing this lets you find areas of very soft mud or creeks and channels to be avoided and identify likely areas that could hold good fish later on. In New Zealand we're so lucky. There are a multitude of estuarine areas and river mouths. Both of these are highly productive places for flounder gigging. Oh, beautiful calm space now. Oh wow, this looks great. This particular bottom of shell, mud, a little bit of sand is just teeming with life and often you'll find flounder just laying in the sand patches between the shells. During the daytime they bury themselves so they're very difficult to spot. But at night with a good flounder gigging light they really stand out. You'll notice the odd muddy trail in the water. This is flounder we disturbed. They saw us before we saw them, and they just bolted. Wow, there was two of them in this bay. It's gone beautiful and calm here. As we slowly walked up the river, the bottom became muddier and muddier, and it looked more and more promising. Interestingly, the softer the mud, the more flounder we were spotting. Then, finally, after startling about 80 flounder, we spot one before it spots us. You'll have to excuse the shaky camera work. I daren't pull the tripod out. I'm sure it would have startled the fish if it had touched the ground. You can see how soft the mud is, the fish is well buried. And then I move closer, just to see how close we can get before it bolts. In a few seconds we'll go flounder gigging at night. But first, I would like to tell you a little about the new flounder gigging lights we're using. These lights are fantastic. They can be run submerged or above the water and they are powerful. Each light emits 200 lumens of light. That's three times as much as our old lights. And you can have up to three lights on each telescopic handle. To change the length of the handle, just twist and pull. It's so easy to set it to your most comfortable gigging length. The two torch unit delivers 400 lumens of light output and the three torch unit emits a blinding 600 lumens. The special lens that we've put in these torches gives a good wide floodlit area and this is great whether you're using it in the water or out of the water. If the water's deeper than a couple of inches I prefer running the light immersed under the water because what this does is traps all of the light rays between the surface and the bottom. Any lost light is reflected back off the surface and comes down quite some distance away. This means that you can see much further than you otherwise would. If the water is dirty, the lights actually operate better out of the water. As you're walking, sweep the light from side to side. It's amazing how big an arc you can cover. We would estimate that you could probably see 15 to 20 feet either side of you. That gives you about a 30 to 35 foot arc of coverage. That's an immense area. Any flounder in that area don't stand a chance. When you do spot a flounder at night, it's amazing how long they'll stay frozen on the bottom, absolutely convinced that you can't see them. You've got plenty of time for sparing them. This one stayed motionless for about two minutes. We kept playing the light on the fish as we slowly withdrew the light away. 
we were trying to find out what would happen if you took the light off the fish. And sure enough, when the light was about 15 feet away, the fish took the opportunity and slowly withdrew. It was gone into the night. Keep an eye on our channel. We'll be doing a full comparison between fishing lights over the coming weeks and we'll be doing some more flounder gigging. Unfortunately our camera batteries ran flat just as we got back onto the flounder.